So a long welcome to another episode of Analog Insights. Today's episode is special because it's the very first of Greg's library. So this is the library, this is Greg, and today we talk about which book? Yeah, we will talk about one of the most influential photo books that was ever printed and published. It's The Decisive Moment from Henri cartier Prison, which was originally published in September 1952 by Simon & Schuster publishing house in New York. Mm -hmm. Only 10,000 books were printed <laughs> and uh, that makes it hard or made it hard for people uh, like me who wanted to have this book but uh, who had to realize that on the second hand market this book was available for $2,500 and mm -hmm. more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so which version do we have here then? Uh, this is the amazing facsimile reprint from Steidl in Göttingen, which is, in my opinion, one of uh, the best photo book printers and, and best photo book publishing houses we have on the world. Günther Steidl is uh, a maniac. He does everything perfect or he doesn't do it. And, uh, <laughs> this kind of person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, you see it in the quality of this book. And uh, good news for all those mm -hmm. who are interested in buying this book. It's available uh, directly uh, at the Steidl Publishing House for less than 100 euros. Okay, so quite a difference in terms of price. Yeah. Yeah. So let's take a closer look at the book. Yeah. And, um, also, maybe start with the title. Why yeah. is it called The Decisive Moment and also what was the original uh, the French title then? Uh, the original French title was translated Photos on a Run. Mm -hmm. And uh, Henri cartier plasson took uh, a speak from the 17th century. It was Cardinal de Retz. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, there is nothing in this world that does not have a decisive moment. And the masterpiece of good ruling is to know and seize this moment. And uh, this is, uh, cartier Plasso exemplified it, uh, this speak for his book, but also for the way he was taking photos his entire lifetime. And uh, we all know Henri cartier Plasso as the co-founder of the Make Magnum Photo mm -hmm. Agency. And, um, I would say not only his book, but also he as a person with his uh, humanistic approach to photography was one of the most influential and one of the most important photographers of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And what is his approach? What was remarkable about his approach? As far as I remember, he was more like a reportage style photographer. Uh, yeah, he, he took and captured the image of, uh, of daily life, of the world surrounding us. And he was uh, a very curious observer. And uh, there are some film documents about him where he is roaming the streets of Paris mm -hmm. in uh, a, for this time, kind of camouflage. He was wearing a suit and a tie. And that was the way you were dressed when you've been walking on the street at these times. And he had his Leica hidden behind his back. And um, he was walking, observing. And then when he saw this uh, moment, he took his Leica, took the picture. And uh, then he, he was again hidden in the crowd. Yeah, that was his way, always being patient, always observing, waiting for this moment, and then capturing this moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And which role did technology play for him and also um, how interested was he in developing his film and, and uh, doing prints? Technology was never a matter for, for cartier Plasson. Uh, I remember that he was once asked what in his opinion is the best camera and he said the best camera is the camera you always have with you 
and that was his opinion about technique. And uh, he had one or two Leica bodies, a 35 millimeter and a 50 millimeter lens on it. And developing films, taking prints was not his issue. So he had a lab. Mm. He told them how he had exposed the films and then he gave it mm. out of the, his hand. He, he never uh, took care about this. Mm -hmm. Technique was not important. Yeah. For him, important was the final image that was yeah. his intention. So let's take a look at some of the images. In the oh, yes. And, um, uh, maybe you can make a selection of um, special images. Very interesting is here we have we have an exact copy mm -hmm. of the original. We have this beautiful suitcase here, the cover, which is also famous like the book because it was designed by uh, Oli Matisse. Mm -hmm. uh, here this is a symbol for the sun, mountains, mm -hmm. a bird with uh, a, a branch in his mm -hmm. beak, uh, here plants, and this is a symbol for water. And it's handwritten also, yeah. uh, the title by Henri Matisse. Uh, this special reprint version has a very nice booklet called A Bible for Photographers, mm -hmm. a prevert from Clemé Chéron, who is um, the um, uh, the head of the Centre Pompidou and curator of the Centre Pompidou in Paris. And this uh, nice little booklet tells everything about the history of this book, mm -hmm. how, it, how it was made, how it came to this book, uh, who was involved in creating this book. And how many people were involved in creating this uh, book? It's been uh, about 15 people at least, uh, Henri cartier Presson. Uh, done, uh, some uh, also Robert Kappa, um, who made mm -hmm. translations mm -hmm. for the text, uh, uh, Inge Morat, who tr uh, supported him with writing the text, also did some translations. Yeah, because obviously he wasn't a writer, he, he uh, was a yeah. photographer. He was a photographer, yeah. yeah. But uh, also very interesting, it's not only a simple photo book, because mm -hmm. you have here, when you start, you have a, a pre word from Henri Cartier Plasson and uh, very nice typography mm -hmm. and it's a beautiful print yeah yeah and that's uh which we can see here also from the start we can see the print quality and mm -hmm. we both uh, can feel the print quality it's an excellent paper mm -hmm. which was used for this book and that's uh, same to the original because the original book was printed on the best paper which was available at this time. So kind of craftsmanship. Yeah. yeah, true craftsmanship, yeah. And uh, it has two sections, mm -hmm. this book. It starts uh, in the 1930s when Henri cartier Plasson started as a photographer. And uh, this first section goes until 1947. And the second section shows pictures from 1947 to 1951, mm -hmm. when the idea for making this book then came up. And so here we can see the way uh, how Cartier Bresson, also in his early days as a photographer, started to work. Yeah. Beautiful compositions. That's, in my opinion, something that is really striking about him. The compositions are always spot on. It's always clear what to focus yeah. on as an observer. And he always uses the environment to frame yeah. the image in a perfect fashion. And uh, although he's, he's capturing moments, he has always this perfect composition. And you see in his photographs influences from Degas, for mm -hmm. example. And uh, then you understand that uh, he was originally starting at art school with painting and drawing. Uh, so. Yeah. so photography for him was just a tool to paint images, basically. Yeah, he was, he painted with light in, yeah. in the original sense of the word photography. Uh, he painted with light yeah. and uh, his way of seeing this is uh, exemplary. And here you see this early works and, and also mm -hmm. 
Some, yeah, this one is very famous here, mm -hmm. this, this open place, but I'm, I'm looking for another very famous and iconic picture that shows how he took photographs and how he was seeing his world. Hmm. Mexico, uh, I think, here it is, yeah. yeah. This is one of his most famous early pictures. This man here jumping through the rain, trying not to touch the wet bottom. And uh, although it's it's not sharp, you, know, uh, you perfect, see yeah. this perfect composition. And uh, also, uh, you can imagine the difficult uh, situation from light. Mm -hmm. But when you look here to this printing, you have a uh, sign in the shadows. Uh, yeah in the light so it's it's uh it's perfect it's all there perfect yeah so these are the early pictures and uh here this picture of the pope for example mm -hmm. standing in the crowd taking this image and uh there's no explanation necessary these pictures mm -hmm. are narrating themselves yeah yeah it's wonderful storytelling yeah. so what else can we say about the book um, it, it also feels like this is a special format, um, not just the sheer size of the book. Yeah, that's <laughs> uh, one thing is, as you said, the, the size of this book is <laughs> impressive. It's a huge book. And um, when you take it to the landscape uh -huh. format, you see that Cantier Blanson was mirroring mm -hmm. with the format of the book, his preferred film format, the 135 millimeter format. Uh, because you have here three to two, mm -hmm. you have the dimension of the uh, uh, 135 millimeter film. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, perfect. And was the original book the same size? Yeah, the original book was the same yeah. size. So this is definitely uh, a, a perfect one-to-one -one copy. So that's the reason why it is called facsimile. Mm -hmm. Facsimile means a one-to-one -one copy in everything. Yeah? Wow. In in making. In, in size, in uh, layout, so it's it's everything like the original and uh, yeah. yeah, beautiful quality. So yeah, we can really recommend it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, maybe we should also talk briefly about what's coming up next year. Um, we have a whole right a whole bookcase behind us, so obviously we will do more um, episodes of Greg's library if you like them. So please let us know in the comment section below what you think. But what else is on our plate? Um, the winter is coming, do we do some lab stuff? Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what we considered today, we should do some lab stuff. And um, as I told you, I have a, a favorite, favorite combination of film and developer. Mm -hmm. It's the Rolla Retro 80, ah. developed in Café Nol. Café Nol means it's uh, instant coffee and some other ingredients. And um, it smells funny, right? <laughs> it smells, uh, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not like our favorite espresso, which, yeah. <laughs> which I like to, <laughs> to serve you here from my machine. <laughs> um, it's it's uh, horrible to drink, but it's uh, excellent for developing films and um, I was influenced by a very good friend of mine, Frank West, mm -hmm. from Schwarzweiß AG, uh, who uses this film, exposing it on 25 ISO mm -hmm. in his Mamiya 7, and he brings uh, gorgeous images uh, with his camera and this film developer combination, and he prints it uh, on, on 60 to 70 centimeters. Also and quite large. <laughs> <laughs> these prints blow you away and uh, I hope that perhaps this year we have the opportunity to meet him in his lab mm -hmm. in Wiesbaden. He offered me that we can visit him, mm -hmm. that we can have a look over his shoulder, watching him how he prints uh, and also um, how he finalizes his prints. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, that's one thing. Uh, yeah. we mentioned to do. Talking about trips, I also have something um, on my mind. Mm -hmm. um, as most of you know, I had trouble with my Leica M3 service and in return for all that happened, 
we were also kindly invited to the Leica factory, so that's also something well, that we could do. Um, visiting, surprise, surprise! <laughs> visiting Wetzlar and um, take a look behind the scenes of how they do their, how they create their lenses and how they also repair um, their traditional Leica M cameras. That's something that we can mm -hmm. do this year if you're interested. Yeah. Uh, then we have still some analog stuff. Mm -hmm in my storage, so uh, <laughs> one of my favorite projects would be definitely the Pentax 67. Yeah. As you know, it's uh, one of my trusted friends. Yeah, and you've got, you guys have been asking about yeah, this camera. It's, 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 a, it's a real workhorse mm -hmm. and uh, I love this beast mm -hmm. and, and I think it's worth for a deeper review. Uh, also, why not some lenses? Mm -hmm. uh, for example, the Pentax SMCA 1.2 50mm, mm -hmm. which fits also to the new Pentax uh, digital full frame cameras. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very interesting combination. Uh, lots of analog stuff. The Kova 6, mm -hmm. which is uh, difficult to get in Europe, but which is, I think, still very popular on the second hand market in Japan and in the United States. Uh, yeah, screw mount Pentax. Yeah, yeah. And I have one more special that I have to mention, and that's a, a, a self made camera created by Jules that he has been building in the last couple of months. All I can say it's a rangefinder and it's 4x5 inch format. So Whoa. something really special. <laughs> it, it took him quite a while, and of course, we want to show you this camera in detail, and uh, that's in a dedicated episode as well. So maybe before we give away too much, yeah. these are the indications, or one more. <laughs> instant film. Instant film, yes. Yeah. Um, we kind of see a revival of instant film. People. We see a revival of instant film. We see a revival, fortunately, of the uh, pack film, mm -hmm. uh, which is now initiated by Impossible Project. Mm -hmm. uh, Doc Cups in Vienna mm -hmm. is, is very close to finalize this project for a new pack film. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. And we also see a resurgence in Cinefilm, right? That yeah. increasingly we have small labs who professionally develop and scan Cinefilm, um, usually for, for Hollywood studios or film studios, and increasingly they start doing that for consumers. Um, and that's also something that we can touch on in some of the episodes. Mm -hmm. So, without further ado, we hope that you enjoyed this uh, very special episode in the very first episode of Greg's Library. If you did, please remember to uh, like this episode and maybe even share it with your friends. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Um, Jules, Greg and I, we really appreciate each and every subscriber coming our way. So thanks for watching. We hope to see you soon. Bye.